coming up on Cardinals Insider. It's really important for the game. It's important for us as players to have them just because, I mean, they push you. The players tell us how fans change the game. Plus, I think as you get older, you realize the blessings that you've been bestowed and just more thankful for them. Adam Wainwright just keeps getting better with time. And later, there's nothing better than putting on this uniform, coming to this stadium, no matter what I'm doing. Tag along with former Cardinal Scott Terry for a one-of-a-kind experience. That and more ahead on Cardinals Insider. Welcome to Cardinals Insider. I'm Ozzie Smith coming to you from Bush Stadium's newly renovated party suites. This season will always stand out in baseball history because it's the year fans return to seats. Not coming to games impacted all of us in 2020, including the players. Here's what they had to say about getting fans in the ballpark. The fans are critical to the game, they're critical to any sport. The intensity they bring, um, it's just, it's really important for the game. It's important for us as players to have them just because, I mean, they push you. The base is loaded situation, no outs or one out, you gotta have a, a ground ball or a, a zero put up there and you strike a first guy out and then you end up getting out of the inning, come off the mound with fist bumps and nothing happens. Normally during that there's this whole big build up of the fans or they start getting on their feet, come on, give, you know, give me a little something, uh, maybe I can do this. When your name's called in the seventh, eighth, or ninth inning, it's a big moment. You know, you miss the fans getting up, giving you that ovation. Baseball is such a long season, 162 games, that when you do get those big, intense matchups, you, know, you feed off um, everyone's energy, and, and we definitely missed it at times. I mean, we had the last game of the year was everything was on the line, and, and there was none of that intensity that you could really feel from the fans, whether that was, like I said, at home, people cheering you on, and and kind of that, even that nervousness from the fans, just that intensity and on the road, maybe when people were trash talking. And I like playing on the road. I'm a road guy for some reason. I miss I miss walking out there and guys yelled at me or walking open, everyone's out there flipping you off and yelling at you. I like that stuff. I don't know why. It brings that little more competitive nature. You know, where I missed them the most last year was kind of like before the game, going out for the anthem, you know, when you want to turn around and look at the people, wave at the people, just kind of interact a little bit. Just being able to give back to the kids, you know, the kids who come out and see us, you know, it's, it's hard not, not giving them that opportunity to come out and watch us. You know, the little fan interactions with the little kids in the front row in center field or, you know, hanging over the dugout, saying hi, you know, just little things that kind of are really fun. The good feeling they can provide you, and, and that was those moments where you kind of needed a little nudge from the fans, that was what I missed most. We really like playing in front of the fans of St. Louis, and, and they're great fans and great baseball fans. That energy and that vibe that you get in a stadium full of people is, is the thing I think everybody will say that they miss the most. Adam Wainwright is a legacy Cardinal and one of the nicest guys you could ever hope to meet. Fans rejoiced this winter when Wayno agreed to a one-year deal rejoining the only big league team he's ever known. And just like Cardinals Nation, Adam Wainwright knows there's something special about St. Louis. The 0-2 pitch. Carlson over, he has it! Wainwright, his 39th birthday, he goes the distance. 23rd complete game of his career. Absolutely remarkable. The last couple of years was, was a tough thought. You know, you, you, try to, you try to pump yourself up for it. You know, you just, <clears throat> you just give everything you got and you don't have it, but. Um, starting to feel it, you know, so it's good to be back. Adam Wainwright is 39 years old, but you wouldn't know it based on how he pitched in 2020. Just a few years ago, Waino was thinking about retirement, but he's proving he's effective as ever here in his 16th season. His opening weekend start in Cincinnati was a 327th of his career. 
just didn't think I'd be playing. You know, I thought I'd be retired a couple of years ago. And so each time I'm afforded a, a new spring training, a new um, opening day, and you know, another playoff opportunity, it just is completely like extra credit almost, you know, like I never thought I was going to have that opportunity. So uh, just a real sense of blessing, just a real sense of um, gratitude for everybody who's involved, everybody who's helped me stay on the field, who's gotten me healthy, who's given me an opportunity to play. Adam Wainwright is back. He got him, struck him out. The 2-2, two -two. got him on the outside corner. He got him. Nine strikeouts, Adam Wainwright. You know, all these things, you just, I think as you get older, you realize the blessings that you've been bestowed and just more thankful for them. Most of Wainwright's career has been spent pitching to his lifelong backstop, Yadier Molina. Opening weekend was their 275th career start, and 2021 marks 16 years as battery mates. Together, they're defying time as they continue to lead the Cardinals in 2021. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Emily Stevens. Straight ahead on Cardinals Insider. Great round, young lady, nice job. An unforgettable BP session, plus, a helicopter ride that changed Cardinals history. That's ahead. Stay with us. This spring, Cardinals Special Events has been welcoming groups to Bush for an on-field batting practice called Fans at Bat. Guests find themselves in the cage at Bush Stadium hitting pitches thrown by Cardinal alumni. Here's how one session looked from former Cardinal Scott Terry's perspective. She's locked in. I'll throw you some cookies on the inner half. You'd like that one back, wouldn't you? My name is Scott Terry. I played here from 87 to 92, and I'm now what they call the ambassador of amateur sports for the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, the closer that ball gets to your hands, the more it hurts. This is called fans at bat. It's an idea that they came with, with to sell 45 minute hitting sessions to 10 people so that they could come out and take some batting practice at Bush Stadium. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do anything at the stadium last year, so this is our first time back. Uh, so we missed 2020, so now 2021, and so these people bought, these, bought this 45-minute session, and so 10 people are in there just taking round, as many rounds as we can get them in 45 minutes. That, that aluminum sound at Bush Stadium just kind of, you know, makes me cringe. So I just want you to know that real men use wood. Just take that for what it's worth. Well, obviously, they're in awe to begin with and then they have all that adrenaline going. So they're very anxious when it comes to hitting. So they end up jumping out whenever they take swings and doing some things that maybe they might not normally do if they're a, you know, somewhat of a uh, hitter, whatever level at which they play. But then they begin to kind of settle down and settle in. And then the next thing they realize is that the ball doesn't go very far when they hit it. So uh, they, this field is much bigger than they think it is because it's enclosed. And so when they begin to hit the ball and it's not going very far, and then they see sometimes they swing and miss. So I think it's a big dose of reality, but by the same token, they, they actually love it. Kind of discouraging, isn't it, when your best bolt doesn't even get to the warning track? Oh! This group did great. They're a very athletic group. There's a young lady in there that was 13 that did a great job. You can tell that she's currently playing, so she's much, much better. There was a kid that I would be willing to bet you two of the, two of the three guys played college ball. Uh, and, but the other one still put the ball in play. So, you know, if, if I were coming here, I would just want to try to hit it and hit it hard somewhere and try to put it in play. The, the, the nightmare is if you swing and miss. But this was a very good group, yeah. Vince has both of those. That was right to Okendo. Ozzy's all over that, HOF. There's nothing better than putting on this uniform, coming to this stadium, no matter what I'm doing. 2020 was the first year I never went to a stadium. So I can't remember the last time I didn't go to a baseball field in a year. And in 2020, I never went to a baseball field. So it's great to get back, back to it. Great round, young lady. Nice job. Still to come, looking back on the Cardinals' move to downtown St. Louis. That's after the break. Cardinal games are a summertime tradition. And while the bases are still 90 feet apart, the way you get into the game is changing. Tickets are now delivered exclusively through the MLB Ballpark app. 
And for instructions on how to get your digital tickets, visit cardinals.com slash ballpark app, and you'll learn how to download, share, and use your tickets all in one stop. Again, for all your ticketing needs, visit cardinals.com slash ballpark app. This is Brett McMillan, host of the Cardinals Insider Podcast. Xavier Scruggs is our guest for the April edition of the show. Immediately felt the chills, and I thought about all the like hard times that I put into it. Download and subscribe anywhere that you get your podcast. From time to time, we like to take a look back at moments which altered the course of baseball in St. Louis. We call them days that changed Cardinals history. Our Brett McMillan has more. The date is May 8, 1966. Outfielder Alex Johnson grounded into a 6-4-3 double play, bringing in a new era. Double play ball to short, Davenport to second, one. Over to first, two, the game is over. It was the final out at Bush Stadium one, which history remembers as Sportsman's Park. After the Giants finished off their 10-5 victory, groundskeeper Bill Stocksick dug out home plate and loaded it onto a helicopter for a ride to its new home next to the recently completed Gateway Arch. On May 12, 1966, the brand new downtown ballpark, Bush Memorial Stadium, or Bush 2, opened its gates. And with them, decades of memories and penance for Cardinals Nation. Including a world championship in 1967, their first full year in the new stadium. And St. Louis wins six to nothing to take a three to one lead in the series. Bush 2's signature arches watched over handoff from era to era of Cardinals baseball, from Brock and Gibson to Ozzie and Willie, finally to Yachty and Albert. It became one of baseball's great cathedrals before saying goodbye after the 2005 season. It all started May 8, 1966, with the final out at Bush 1, most certainly a day that changed Cardinals history. For Cardinals Insider, I'm Brett McMillan. All summer, we're honoring the legacy of Mike Shannon as he completes his final year in the broadcast booth. Mike is a St. Louis native, as is David Fries. Here's how they came together to end one of the greatest games in baseball history. Two delivery on its way. Swing and a high drive to center field. Get up, baby. Get up, baby. Get up. Oh, yeah, David. as an all-time unbelievable a leadoff home run by David Freeze. He tied it with a two-run triple in the bottom of the ninth. He wins it here in the 11th. You can see more historic highlights on the Cardinals YouTube channel. Just select the historic highlights playlist. But for now, Cardinals Insider continues after the break. Last summer, a group of St. Louis students took part in a filmmaking camp called We Make Movies. They set out to tell stories of consequence using nothing but an iPhone and editing software. When they partnered with the St. Louis Cardinals, it opened the door to experiences which changed the kids' view of storytelling. Take a look. St. Louis Summer Stories is meant to be uh, a program, a free program, to bring kids together from diverse parts of St. Louis. The folks who are involved, uh, both at We Make Movies in LA, as well as the folks at Apple, uh, who are really generous in uh, not only their support, but also the conceptual idea. The, the Cardinals Fantasy Camp does a lot more than just, you know, have people wear uniforms and go play with some Cardinals alumni. The money raised by Cardinals Fantasy Camp was helping to open this brand new center, this, this cancer center for adolescents. When you're taking on really challenging, really heavy, nuanced stories, that's honestly where the learning happens. It just so happened that Ricky Horton, being the 
fantasy camp commissioner for the Cardinals alumni, uh, was absolutely on board. Love to meet your students. And so we kind of did a hybrid situation since the pandemic last summer was still really fairly raging. We did a lot of Zoom calls with the students, but we decided to put our masks on and we went down to Ballpark Village and we had a chance to interview Ricky Horton. So you're getting me from all angles, but where do you want me to look, right here? Right here. Yes. Let's just ask. If you don't ask, you don't get. That's kind of been a lesson I learned and, and one I wanted to pass on to the students. Ozzy agreed to do a Zoom interview with our students. So here we are in this Zoom, right? And you can see their faces and it was just like, to be able to give students access and unique access they otherwise would never be able to have is something really, really special. These students who grew up after he retired, they know him as an icon, as a person who represents the Cardinals, who represents so much more than just as a baseball player. It was amazing because you get to see students really kind of come to grips with how do I tell this story? We're looking forward to year two of St. Louis Summer Stories and working with the St. Louis Cardinals. You don't need to come from a certain high school, public, private, city, suburbs. We want to break down those walls. Cardinals Nation Restaurant and the Cardinals Nation Rooftop are welcoming fans back to downtown St. Louis. You can enjoy the game at Cardinals Nation with or without a ticket. Here's a look at what's new this season across Clark Street. We started the ballpark to go last summer when you couldn't get in the ballpark at all. We thought that people might still want to get that ballpark fair and be able to take it home. So there's still the two ballpark boxes. They're both intended to feed six people. The foul pull pack is six pounds of wings, up to three different options of wings. The other is your ballpark favorites. That is going to be the same bratwurst, the same nacho, the same hot dog bun, everything that you would get from the concession inside. And we make it easy. You order it online, you pick it up in the parking lot, call us when you get there, it comes right out to you, and it's a, it's a contact-free kind of transaction. We took the menu that we operated with last summer, but we've added marinated steak kebabs. We've added a piled high Italian sandwich, we called it the Hill. We've also added some new dessert items that our executive chef makes in-house, a New York style cheesecake. We've added a soft serve ice cream machine at the bar. You put a soft serve ice cream machine at a bar with the alcohol, you, you get some boozy milkshakes. We've added in-seat dining to the Cardinals Nation rooftop. This allows us to do some served items on a buffet. Your ballpark fare is gonna be served to you on a buffet. Everything else, we've created a casual dining menu that you scan that QR code right from your seat or from a table that you're sitting at, and you order what you want and we bring it to you. Now that's included in your ticket. So there is no checkout procedure. You just go in, scan, the scan tells the kitchen or the, or the food runner where you are, and you can order your beverage, you can order your food off the menu. It, it's really gonna be an upgraded experience for that Cardinals Nation rooftop. Coming up, I answer one of your questions during Ask Ozzy. It's time for this week's Ask Ozzy. Stan in Hoxie, Arkansas asks, if you didn't play professional baseball, what other sport would you have played? Or would you have done something else different? Well, basketball was what I excelled in in high school, so if I didn't play baseball, I probably would have played uh, basketball. But um, my degree was in social science, so it was with a teaching background. So I'll, if I didn't play baseball or any sport, I probably would have been a teacher. The impact that we can have as players is very, very important, and I've never taken that lightly. I know that young people look up to us, and when I have the opportunity to speak with young people, I tell them how important it is to, to work hard to be the very best that you can be, and that you're only going to get out of something what you put in. So if you don't put anything in, you shouldn't expect anything in return, and that's life. Thanks for the question, Stan. If you want to submit a question, head to cardinals.com insider and click the Ask Ozzy tab. There's more still to come here on Cardinals Insider, so stay with us. Nolan Arenado is an eight-time gold glover, but he's not the first Cardinal third baseman with that stat on his resume. Scott Rowland won three of his eight in St. Louis, and he manned the hot corner during one of the most successful eras in franchise history. Here's a look at his career during this week's Redbird Reels. to 
to be a tough play. Rolling. Oh, what a play! Barehanded pickup by Rowland, out at first. What a play by Rowland, knocks it down. Long throw and he's got it. Rowland, deep left field, at the track, gone! Red slam, Scotty Rowland! Up the middle, a four for four night for Scott Rowland. A long drive to left. Where will this one land? Gone! Home run! Cardinals take the lead. He rolling. He could give the Cardinals the lead. Swing and get up, baby! Get up, get up, get up, get up! Home run! Rolling has just given the Cardinals a 4-2 to two lead. Listen to Cardinal Nation. Scott Rowland. You're going to come back. This is the spot. The fans don't forget teams and their alumni along the way. All the fame. Scott Rowland and Jason Isringhausen going in. A four-time NL All-Star. He won four Rawlings Gold Glove Awards and one Silver Slugger. Scott Rowland. It's truly an honor to represent in that St. Louis Cardinals uniform the birds on the bat for this organization. So thank you, St. Louis Cardinals. Scott Rowland, welcome to the Cardinals Hall of Fame. That's it for today. If you'd like to learn more about the location of today's episode, visit cardinals.com slash party suites. And as a reminder, you can watch on this station each week or catch full episodes on YouTube. Plus, we're always online at cardinals.com slash insider. I'm Ozzie Smith, and I'll see you next week.